we decided, you know, we had post-87 moved into various program forums that one of the things we thought could be interesting, and, you know, we always had the creative groups trying to push the boundaries, said, you know, we need a soap opera. Why can't we do a soap opera that would be like people are going to be interested in the lives of kids? And, uh, you know, we could reflect about the modern generation of young people today, and it would be interesting. So, okay, cast it out, not cast it out, but work it out, budget it out, and it came to me, and we said, you know, this is really good, but we, we don't have the kind of money to do this because, you know, we have to now hire writers. Mm -hmm. It was to be a scripted soap opera. We had never done anything really scripted before. Hire writers, we don't have any money for that. So then Doug uh, Herzog went back with his team and came back, and they said, well, you know, if we can't hire writers, someone says, why don't we just put a bunch of kids in a loft and uh, put some uh, cameras in the walls and tape them, and then we'll post-produce it into shows, because post-production is really our greatest aptitude production-wise. Mm -hmm. We're great at that. And uh, hence reality TV uh, was born, or at least this generation of it. And people would say we had some great plan. It was just that we didn't have any money. We can't hire writers, so let the kids say what the hell they want. We'll edit it all together. So, you know, and they're still on the air, and it's as successful as ever. The first season wasn't that successful. What we found was that every subsequent season, un unlike the normal law of television, where ratings might go up for a while, but then they go down, every subsequent season became more and more popular. We got better at casting them. Of course, they became a bit more stilted, but they were a bit more... We got better at it, and, then, and, and all of a sudden, the real world had itself become sort of a little sub-brand, and it stood for something, and people were curious. They were curious to see what people their age were doing. Of course, over time, it, it became, uh, you know, a bit exaggerated. But the early ones were clearly quite innocent. And, uh, you know, it kicked off, you know, so much of what we see all over TV today. Oh, you look at reality shows now, they know that, you know, it's outsized characters, and that's how you make a name for yourself. You're Snooky in Jersey Shore, or you're some wild character on The Real World, or any number of those other shows. And, you know, next thing you know, you have a career. I think there was an innate interest of people watching people their own age. When you're 18 to 24, when you're that age, when you're a teenager, you're always looking for clues, visual clues, behavioral clues from others. And that was a place where you could see a lot of that, and they found it fascinating. So there was that basic uh, attraction, and I think that built over time as we got better at doing it.